the unbeaten European featherweight champion Paul Hodkinson from Liverpool goes for a world title after only 18 fights. In contrast, Marcos Villasana makes his fifth attempt to become world champion. The tough little Mexican has stopped 43 of his 60 opponents. Welcome to the GMAX Center in Manchester. Well, we're desperately short of world boxing champions in Britain at the moment, but here's a chance now of winning a meaningful title. Paul Hodkinson of Liverpool taking on Marcos Villasana for the WBC Featherweight Championship, a title vacated recently by the unbeaten Jeff Fennick from Australia. Well, there's been plenty of good names that have won this title in the past, names like Azuma Nelson and the late Salvador Sanchez. And, of course, we know all about... Barry McGuigan, the last featherweight champion from Britain to win the world title. But here's another Bun Eastwood fighter now, Paul Hodkinson, on the world title game. Hodkinson is a puncher and an excellent pressure fighter at domestic and European levels. He became the European champion in only his 15th fight. This was his second European defence against Farid Ben Rajeb. He soon stopped him, but not before the Frenchman had shaken him. Paul is the best puncher fighter in Britain. But the doubts are, can he take a punch? Has he enough experience with Villasana? Do his eyesight problems make him a man in too much of a hurry? We will see tonight. And can Hodkinson follow John Conte, who was a fine world light heavyweight champion? They both went to the same school and the same Kirby Amateur Boxing Club. And can Hodkinson follow Barry McGuigan, who won the WBA version five years ago? Hodkinson, who's 24, doesn't want to be compared with McGuigan, but if he wins tonight, it'll be inevitable, especially as Barney Eastwood will have managed both to world titles. Hodkinson doesn't have McGuigan's appeal just yet, but he's made quicker progress to the British and European titles. Hodkinson's career was in doubt last year because of those eyesight problems, but the British board was satisfied with medical reports by the time he met the Mexican Eduardo Montoya in his last fight. Eyesight, though, wasn't the only worry. Hodkinson had to recover from a shock first-round knockdown, the only time he's been on the canvas as a professional. But he did recover, and as you saw, he stopped the late substitute. And that scare didn't stop the matching then with Villasana for this vacant WBC featherweight title. Villasana is 30 in 16 days' time. He's fought the best, Jeff Fennick here beating him on points. And before that, he twice met Azuma Nelson, losing both on points as well. Villasana then fought a draw with the champion Antonio Esparagosa for the WBA title. Indeed, his last four opponents have been world champions, but it's been 14 months since his last fight. Villasana, who's never afraid to risk a low blow, what has he got left in the tank? We'll find out. Meanwhile, Villasana was first on the scales at today's weigh-in. He made the weight easily enough, being one pound under the nine stone limit. But there are a few tense moments for Hodkinson before the scales finally settled at eight stone, 13 and a half pounds. Bonnie, you're a successful bookmaker. How do you weigh up this fight? I think it's take, a pick, take your pick, spin of a coin, uh, five to four on, pick them. That makes it a fascinating prospect. I think it'll be a very, very good fight. Uh, I think it's a real world title fight. Uh, I expect to see some real action there tonight. And uh, as I say, I think it's take your pick. It's even Stephen. I feel confident, you know. I feel relaxed and confident. And I know about the ability to beat Villas, I? I see it going 10, 11, possibly the full distance. And uh, if Paul can contain himself in the early rounds and box and move, then I think we'll have a new world champion tonight. Well, the actual outcome, of course, always the fascination of this sport. This is the WBC belt. Doesn't belong to anyone, of course, at the moment because it's vacant. But later tonight, it'll belong to Britain's Paul Hodkinson or it'll belong to Mexico's Marcus Villasana. Well, these are some of the worst moments for a boxer before a fight. I'm sure that Paul Hodkinson here in the dressing room is thinking, for goodness sake, let's get on with it. Paul Hodkinson then with his boxing career riding really on this one. Looking pretty happy too and relaxed. While well, he's looking relaxed. First though, on his way to the ring is Marcus Villasana for a world title fight that's sponsored by Stanley Leisure. As he comes into the ring, let's join our commentary team of Jim Watt and first up, Reg Gutteridge. Well, there it is then, the, the long walk to the ring with this fellow now. Can he do it at the fifth attempt? Wouldn't be the first one to do it. The great Jersey Joe Walcott did that. Two fights with Joe Lewis, two fights with Ezra Charles, and the Mexican and the Japanese have done it at lower weights. Now, 
really for honours earned and being game. This fella, in a way, deserves it. But uh, Paul Hodgkinson really is such a favourite in Liverpool, such an exciting fighter, that it's, I suppose, for his sake, worth the risk. He's short-sighted as far as the boxing border controls visual standards are concerned, but uh, there's nothing actually wrong with his uh, eyes as such. It was only just reading the visual standards, which vary in amateurs and pros. Well, he's getting a fairly decent uh, reception here, and so he should, a real good pro. Been out 14 months, but you know, we can't gripe about that because so was Frank Bruno before he fought Mike Tyson. Jim, you've seen this guy a couple of times. He, he's a good pro, isn't he? Yeah, a very, a very, very good pro, yeah, he knows all the moves, very experienced, he knows, he's been here so often in the past, he has absolutely no fears, he's been in with the best fighters in the division, and although he's lost to them he, and, and drawn with one of them, he's held his own, he knows he can mix in this company, no nerves whatsoever, he looks very relaxed, looking forward to the job. So here comes the other challenger, remember this is for the vacant championship now, given up by Jeff Fennick of Australia to move up in weight. But they are the official nominated challengers by the World Boxing Council, which generally has the best recognition of all these rival ruling bodies, as they call them. And if you're confused by all the alphabet boys, all the initials, don't be, don't be because we all are in the game at the moment. It's quite ridiculous. But uh, certainly, you'll get all the encouragement. There's nobody can beat the Liverpool boys when it comes to getting their man in the ring from the same background as uh, John Conti, as Gary Newborn was saying. So led in the ring there by Bernardo Checa from Panama, who's the co-trainer, taken over from the late Eddie Shaw. And of course, Barney Eastwood, the promoter manager in the corner there, and uh, Paddy Byrne, who's probably handled the cuts if there's any trouble. And that's the referee, Arthur McCanty, a remarkable man, this really athletic referee, and he's 71 years old. And uh, he handled the first Ali Frazier fight. So now it's over to MC Vince Miller. Gentlemen, please, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing, three minutes each round for the vacant WC featherweight championship of the world. Presenting and introducing in the blue corner from Mexico, Marcos Villasana. And in the red corner from the city of Liverpool, Paul Hoko Hodgkinson. At the way in this afternoon, Hodgkinson scaled eight stone, 13 and a half pounds, 125 and a half pound. Velasana, eight stone, 13 pound, 125 pounds. Your officials appointed by the WBC are as follows. Your representative, Peter Stuckey from Switzerland. Your judges from the USA, Frank Brunette, Arsene Klopp from Belgium, and from Luxembourg, Bob Logis. Your timekeeper is Dominic Engel, and your referee for this contest is Arthur Mercanti from the United States of America. This is the main event of the evening. So there it is now. Let's get down to business. Probably the best referee in the business can handle this. And nobody knows that better than Jim Watt. He had two world title fights when he won and lost the championship, my sparring partner commentator. He won't stand for the low punches that Villasana is fairly famous for, Jim. He's had uh, points deducted, would you believe, in all his championship fights, and he would have beaten Antonio Esparagosa in that drawn contest had he not had the point deducted for low blows. So there's no such thing as the no foul rule being in existence. If somebody persistently fouls, they still can get thrown out. But I would think that's a bit unlikely. It's bad enough when they get deducted a full point and sometimes two points. So there they are, they're all ready for action in the old railway station here in Manchester. Now, we want to see, Jim, how much uh, Villasana's got left, whether those hard battles over the years now have taken its toll or not. I've always been a great admirer of his. He's a, a wiry guy who seems to take punches so well. And there's a weight of Mexican money came out at the last minute for this, and in fact, he's, uh, he's, been, he's favorite uh, at the finish here, Villasana, believe it or not. 11 to 10. 11 to 10 on. Yes, 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 
So now is there going to be any restraint from uh, Hoko, as his nickname uh, Hodkinson, as the, the management of wanted, Jim? Well, I don't think Hodkinson should uh, change his style. He has to put Villasan under pressure, but he must keep his own chin nice and low, as he's doing at, at the beginning of the open round here. He, he's keeping his chin low. Already he's found a target with good shots. Just has to be nice and careful, especially in the first couple of rounds. Already a little bit of blood, I think, coming from Hodkinson's nose. So uh, Villa San obviously managed uh, some success early. Really, Villa San is amazing, Jim. He's such a tall guy for a featherweight, and he looks so spidery, but he takes wax, and he's going to need to here, because Hodkinson is getting him off pretty quickly. What an exciting fighter he is. Well, Reg, nobody's going to take too many of these left hooks. Those are tremendous punches from Hodkinson. His tactics are perfect at this moment. His chin nice and low, but he's applying the steady pressure. The good, powerful punches. Well, that was what they were gambling on there, the Hodgkinson management, that maybe Villasana's gone to the well once too often. But you know what they say in this game, there's a long way to go. It's scheduled for 12 rounds, of course. So Hodkinson just seems to be bursting with life at, at the moment. That's the difference between the two fighters at this point. Uh, I don't know, Villa Sana, a bit more experienced. He wants to come into the fight a little bit slower. But Hodkinson really has started well. There's the countdown then to the opening round. And what a sparkler it's been. They haven't hung about at all. Their style of fighting, it's... Uh, head-on stuff. So the farmer from Mexico then knows what it's like now. This, this young kid means business, doesn't he? He's, he's only 24, Paul Hodkinson, and uh, we've seen quite a bit of it now on uh, ITV, and there's the familiar face of uh, Barney Eastwood, and there's the statistics then for him. And that's uh, Bernardo Checker working on the corner. Full of confidence, this fella. Reminds me a bit, for those who followed the game for years, right back to Dave Charney's uh, time. Jim, let's have a look at some replay there. Yeah, good positive start from Hodkinson. I thought Villasana's defence would have been a little bit more sound than it is. Hodkinson landed two tremendous left hooks. That one seemed to have an effect on Villasana, but uh, a very strong man indeed. Corners. So that's good, they're getting what the Americans call the 10 second buzzer, they're using a whistle here. Seconds out. And it's time we introduce that. In Round two. We get the seconds out in time. Round two. Well, he ran into trouble last time, Hodkinson, against another Mexican of lower quality than this, uh, Montoya. But he's, he's learned from that fight, and I think he's in a lot better shape too. He's taken about eight weeks training in Belfast. Almost camp training, that is. <laughs> Only taken one count in his career, remember. There's the first low punch, Jim. But, uh, Hodgkinson didn't bother himself with that. He just marched on and the referee ignored it. Well, Villa, Villa Santa has long arms uh, for, for this weight, and he throws some of the punches wide. So I think that has to be expected. Some of them are going to land low. But uh, it's up to Arthur McCanty uh, just to keep tabs on that. But again, Hodkinson, Hodkinson's left hook landing bang on the chin. See, Villa Santa doesn't have that spark that uh, Hodkinson has at the moment. Hodkinson, full of fire, full of life. Yeah, he just looks like the old pro's got a bit of lead in his legs. I don't think it's the 14 months out of action that's bothering him. He does enough from memory to know how to get back for Lasada, but uh, it's the hard battles that he's had. Can you imagine two with Azuma Nelson and then with Espada goes and then with another hard nut and Jeff Fennick. 
But they're the official nominated one and two by the WBC to take over the championship. And of course, if you like the statistics, it's 91 years since an English fighter won the featherweight championship of the world. Two from Wales, of course, the peerless Jim Driscoll and uh, Howard Winstone, and of course, from Ireland, Barry McGuigan. Minute to go in the second. And Hodgkinson, as you can hear from the crowd, is having a bit of a ball here. He's picking his punches well, and he looks as though he's fighting the right sort of fight anyway, but he just, as long as he keeps bobbing, weaving, tucking his chin down, he's in with a really good chance of becoming the new champion of the world. A long career member, coming up 30 for Lasana, and he was a, a pro at 17 years of age. He's only been stopped twice in his career, and that was back in uh, 1982. And as we come up to the end of the round, Jim, I, I would think Hodgkins Hutkinson's got to save himself. I've got to bide my time with this fellow a bit. I've hit him in my best shots, and he still hasn't gone. And there's the bell and a couple of punches afterwards. So Arthur McKenzie just looking over in the corner there because there's a, there's a little nick around Hodgkinson's left eye. And there was the statistics uh, for Villasana. They're using the ice pack on him already. And uh, Paddy Byrne, expert cut man, is having to work on that corner. It's, it's a bit un unfortunate this happened so early in the contest, but uh, in boxing terms, it, it really isn't that bad. It's, it's away from trouble, I think, there. So it's amazing, Jim. He's the one that's been doing the... The majority of the punches. Corners. And Arthur McCanty said no, that, that was called Seconds a out. punch. And Round head three. Collision, which means that if it, it did end uh, if after at the end of this round, uh, that it wouldn't need to go to point because it was a, not a deliberate butt. So in the third then. I just hope Hodgkinson doesn't lose his composure now because of that cut. It seemed to be in the, the soft tissue of the eyelid. There, there's no reason the cut should worsen. It's not on the, the, the bone of the eyebrow. So I just hope he keeps his composure and carries on doing as he's been doing in the first couple of rounds. The heads are banging together again early in this round, Reg. But I just hope that cut hasn't worried Hodgkinson. Well, you had an experience a few times with cuts, Jim. I imagine it does do. And, uh, it looks as though it's worsening, I regret to say, this early. Well, I think Hodgkinson was complaining and maybe about a little clash of heads again. It's not like him to complain. See, this is the problem with this man being so tough. If Hodgkinson feels he has to get him out of there in the, the third round, then the man is so tough, Hodgkinson could waste a lot of energy here. No, certainly the Hodgkinson mustn't show too much anxiety at this stage. He's got to try and kid the other fellow that it's not bothering him at all. He mustn't get reckless. That was a right hand that Hodgkinson took. That's the first time he's been caught with his chin high, Reg. But he seems to have taken the shot OK. And he was stuck up there as though he was peering over somebody's fence there, Jim. The, he really can't afford to do that. See, this is what happened to him before. He felt he was on the verge of knocking the man out and he just carried his chin too high. I hope he doesn't do that. He's, he's losing a bit of his composure, still boxing well, but he's going to have to tighten up again, take no chances. There's a bit of swelling on the eye too, Reg, which is going to be a bigger problem than the cut. Oh, good shot there, and that was seen from the back of the hole. But uh, Villasana either saw it coming and ignore it. And they're on their feet there in the, what they call the bleachers at the back of the stands here at the GMX really spurring Hodgkinson on because they can see even from that far away that he's having this problem with the eye. There's these punches that Hodgkinson's landing are knockout punches. It's testament to this man's ability to absorb a punch. Well, we said that on the way in, Jim, didn't we? I mean, he's, he trades on durability, this fella. Just incredible. 
you have to expect with these fellows that suddenly they just lose everything, but it hasn't happened to Villasana. Hodgkinson's landing the punches and the man's still there. So, so Villasana's throwing a little scything right hand punch. I think he's trying to worsen the eye injury. Stop holding and hitting as we come up to the bell. So now then, they're almost like the, the best first aid men in the business. They've got to be there using the adrenaline swabs. And uh, there's our camera, camera coverage of that there. It really is a hard old business, isn't it? When you hear the, the big purses that these lads can get, I don't know, they don't measure up to the heavyweights, of course, but, uh, well, listen, it's worth every penny of it. It's the preparation for the fight that's so draining, Jim, as well. And they're using the old end swell, the sort of what I used to call a doll's house iron. It goes into the ice bucket and then it's pressed on the swelling. Now, is that going to hurt his confidence, Jim? So, well, I think the swelling rage, unfortunately, is more serious than the cut. The cut there doesn't trouble the, the vision, but if that eye closes, then Hodkinson obviously in serious trouble. Seconds out, round four. Fourth round. And the seconds in the Mexicans' corners were complaining about something there, Jim. I missed that as I looked at the, as they came out for this round. Well, at this stage, they're doing a good job, uh, Paddy Byrne and the Hodkins in the corner there, of, well, at least staunching the problem. Villasana trying to use the jab now just to catch Hodkinson as he, as he comes in. When Hodkinson gets close, he's a far better performer than Villasana. Villasana now trying to keep him at long range, not working. Good little short hooks there he could use Hodkinson, but he's still got to... The accumulation of punches is what's going to count for him now. He tries to wear opponents down a bit like a virus, but, you know, this fellow's been through it all before. Hodkins is really on top now, Reg. These are tremendous punches he's getting home with. What an, what an exciting and gutsy batter he is to Hodkins, isn't he? And I can understand why the American television is taking this one live as well to the States. This is the sort of battle they relish in. They know, they know what the Lasana can do and they've heard all about Hopkinson. Well, Regs, this was always going to be a cracker because of the style of both men. But I think Villasana looks as though he's feeling the pressure a little bit now. His punches don't seem to have the snap. It could be because uh, Hodkinson is pushing him back all the way. But uh, his punches don't have anything like the snap Hodkinson's hand. So a minute to go in the fourth round. What a hard battle this is, a real war of attrition. And the stamping of the crowd's feet there of approval, obviously. They're certainly getting their money's worth. Well, these punches that Hodkinson are getting home with are tremendous punches. I, I can hardly believe I expected Villasana to be tough, but I didn't expect him to take so many of these. Well, you remember when we watched him with Azuma Nelson, they, what a banger he is. Uh, and certainly was better those days, actually, when he fought Villasana, and he hung in there with him. But uh, Azuma Nelson doesn't throw punches at the rate or, or with the same pressure Hodkinson does. I mean, this has been constant good shots coming towards him. He's taken them all. He's out. Good oh, professional call. Oh, oh. Round right? five. Round five. Oh, oh. Get out. Let's go. Well, I thought he was going to change stance there, Villasana, and uh, really throw us again, but he hasn't done so. 
former Mexican champion who made seven defences of the title and then gave it up because he had nobody else worth fighting. There's a lot of swelling around that left higher edge. A lot of swelling, and that is going to be an even bigger problem to Hodkinson than the cut. Thankfully, Hodkinson is at his best up close because he doesn't want this fight at long range now, especially with the vision in the left eye. So I wonder if we can hear from Gary Newbon, who's talking to Barney Eastwood in the corner. As he's coming. Barney, how bad is that cut and bomb? It's a, it's a very bad bomb. And it's a fair cut, and, but we've been able to control the cut, but the, the swelling's getting worse. Uh, Paul, he's just a bit over anxious, but I feel that if we can wear this next couple of rounds, you know, maybe the, maybe the other guy's going to be getting slow. I don't know. Uh, Paul himself, it's very, very difficult at this point. Well, there it is, unusual there to get a, a word uh, from the horse's mouth, as they say in the corner. Well, there are signs now, Reg, that Villasan are beginning, really. Yeah, it's going to go over to bits here, yeah. Yeah, just suddenly, in the middle of this round, it suddenly looked as though Villasana, all these hard punches and Hodkinson's pressure tonight beginning to pay off. But just as we're saying that, Reggie, he grits his teeth and comes back again. Well, you can watch with the crowd here and let, really let them get on with it here. It's, you can hardly describe this, it's so obvious what's happening. What a battle. And he's turned southpaw now, Villasana. What a chin this fellow's got, but for how long? He knows how to fight off the rope for Lozano, but there's, his legs are definitely rooted to the canvas at this stage, but the arms are still moving. Yeah, there's no power in Villasana's work here. Hodkinson really in total command here. A couple of good shots in the chin, sure they would get Villasana out of there. But this man is just so tough and so strong. So we're in the last half minute then. Well, it's an old line I use about they could have fought this in a telephone booth. They don't need this ring. Which, incidentally, is not as big a, as the WBC normally have, but uh, both fighters agreed in the end. What a fight. It always had the ingredients of this kind of fight. A genuine hard world championship. And how's that for an acknowledgement by a couple of gladiators there? I really love that when they do that, boxes, and say, well, you're not bad, are you, mate, in their respective languages? Jim? Reg, I just can't believe that Villas... Look at that punch that Villasana's just taken. Bang on the chin. Hodkinson landed so many solid shots. It looked at this point as though Villasana was in his way. There it goes, another right hand. Bang on the chin. The man's legs are all over the place. He's just throwing wide swinging arm punches. Look, no power. But the man saw the round out. Right, look at, look, the way look at that, that punch, Reg. Yeah, the way Hodkinson steamed in after him. He knows it's a bit desperate now with the eye problem. But this, this fellow's got a, a chin of iron and a heart to match at the moment. So as Barney East would say, and he's a bit more worried there about the swelling than he was about Corners. the cut. Seconds out, round six. Round six, the scheduled 12 rounds, championship of the world. And this almost string beanie looking featherweight, isn't he? Villasana, late stone 13, pound inside the limit. Just a half a pound lighter than Hodgkinson, but what that's worth. And they're trying to make Hodgkinson just jab with the left hand now. But he thinks the Mexican, well, he's not on the run in the true sense of the word, but he's backing off more than he did at the start. Now, you get the impression now, Jim, they might have said in the corner, OK, you look as though you can handle this fellow now. Don't throw everything at once. Pick the shots a bit. Well, Hodkinson is such great shape. What a tremendous performance has been from Hodkinson. He's done everything perfect. His tactics have been perfect. He's kept this man under pressure. Hasn't had a bad round all the way through. Kept control. It's just this man's courage. That's the only reason that the fight is still going on at this moment.
say the ring's the loneliest place in the world, and I tell you, these, these fellas wouldn't mind a, a gate in the ropes at times, I would have thought. They're really giving it all. Just a little, little drop in pace now with Hodkinson, but you can hardly blame him, Reg. He's just dropped the pace slightly. He's up close, but he's not. the punches aren't flowing the way they were flowing. Maybe just taking a breather. Or maybe now he doesn't want to waste punches and wants to make every single one count. Oh, he's probably saying, what have I got to do to get this fellow over? Shoved him off there, Villasano, as if to say, get your head up or something like that. It's a bit unusual for an old pro like that to get a bit rattled. It's probably surprised that uh, this kid, as he would probably call him, is coming at him and really nagging the life out of him with punches. Well, Villasana is really feeling the pace now, Reg. His chin's still as strong as it's ever been, but he's really feeling the pace. And not much snap in Villasana's work now. Stop pounding, stop pounding, let's go! So there's the countdown then for the six, and the pattern hasn't changed. It's, it's a war all the way. And a little glance at each other, sort of glance of respect rather than anger of the two good sporting fighters here. You've got a draw, of course, Hodgkinson, uh, with Thomas Aguilas in Panama, which was, I don't know what he was doing there at the time, only a six rounder. Jim? Well, Hodkinson dropped the pace slightly in that round, but he still won the round, he still controlled the action. So I think now they're maybe looking at this fight, could go all the way, so make sure he does not run out of steam. I think that's the only way Hodkinson can lose this battle now, if he runs out of steam. Well, he's getting the, the old Liverpool chants there in the songs, and there's nobody better at it. I wonder what's going through this fellow's mind now. I had four goes at this, and now I've got to fight for my life to try Corners. and get fifth time up. And he knows his back has had quite a lot of money on him. Seconds out, yeah. round seven. And Arthur McKenzie lets them get on with the fight, doesn't interfere too much, keeps it under control, one of the best in the world. And it's his 91st World Championship. in great shape, Hodkinson, uh, apart from getting their banged around the face a little bit now, well, that, uh, that goes with the territory in this game. See, the fight's been at a tremendous pace, Reg, but it's always been Hodkinson dictating the pace, so he's lasting that pace better. He's younger, he's stronger. Best shape of his life, things that are really going his way here. Well, we may not need the judges, and the referee doesn't vote. They come from Belgium, Luxembourg and uh, USA. There really are a couple of stags, aren't they? Head to head, banging away there. And uh, he's in country south, Paul yeah, Edge. They're both turned to south, Paul Jim. There looks like we're watching a fight in a mirror, doesn't it? Head still banging a little bit dangerously here. Yeah, it's not deliberate batting though, Jim. It's just boring in, isn't it? Yeah, well, they're both trying to keep their chins down nice and low. And the heads are banging, nothing intentional. The whole Hodgkinson family are here at, uh, at ringside now. You can imagine the tension that they must be suffering watching this. As I can't believe this man's taking these punches so well. I've never seen anyone with a chin like that in my life. Certainly not at the featherweight limit, Jim, and looking so spidery as he's, he's built, isn't he? He's amazing. With a minute to go in the seventh. He's beginning to try to push Hodkinson back now. If that happens, Reg, we could have a slight turn around here. No punch there, Jim. I said it, uh, when they wheeled him in, I said, this fellow knows about uh, a few south of the border punches. And that one, believe me, although Hodkinson didn't complain, was a bit nearer the equator. Hodkinson not so tight now, Reggie. His defence is a little bit open now. 
Just wants to get that chin down, the hands up, and keep doing as he's been doing. Keep the pressure going if he still has a strength. A lovely shot. It's always great to see a British fighter coming in and saying, OK, you want it hard, you want it close, you want double-handed punches, I'll have a bit of that too. I really admire Hodkinson for that. He's, he's got an American style anyway. He's always had it right back from the amateur days. And his only stoppage was against John Davidson, who's uh, also in the audience tonight. And uh, although Hodkinson did win the return. That was in the amateurs. So again, the hectic corner work there with the adrenaline pads and uh, Paddy Burns used to this, of course, has handled uh, Barry McGuigan at one time and most of the Irish fighters he works with and he's been in the game for a few years. So the overhead camera view then, uh, that'll give you an idea of what I was saying about the, the stag view. And that was the point where Jim Watt was saying that uh, Hodgkinson gets on top and Villasana looks as though he's going to fade away, but then he suddenly wants to come back again. Uses the ropes to his advantage a lot. Four ropes they have uh, these days. It's a medical rule to try and stop boxers falling out the ring when they've been hit. Corners! Please. All right, seconds out. Let's go. Seconds out. Round eight. So round eight. And the referee making sure those seconds get out on time. Eh? They're trying to steal as many seconds as they can. That's, you know what I mean? <laughs> seconds on the clock, that is, of course. So if you've come in late for viewing, you've certainly missed something here. We're in the eighth round. There's been no knockdowns, but it's been an absolute tough battle by two great little fighters. And the scouser Hodgkinson injured very early on there and swollen around the left eye. And Villasana, this is his fifth attempt for the featherweight championship of the world. I think Villasana is now trying to push Hodgkinson back, Reg. And that is the last thing, obviously, we want to happen. Hodgkinson, thank you, there's still plenty of life, still plenty of power. Yeah, he's got a lot to make up for Lozano, Jim, though, isn't he? I mean, there's no doubt, for, on our card anyway, that Hodgkinson's ahead. Yeah, Hodgkinson well in front, a mile in front, Reg. Uh, she, sheer work rate alone. But I could see in the previous round, in this round, Villasana trying to push him back. What a true warrior he is, really, isn't he, uh, Villasana? It's amazing, really, comes out of Acapulco originally. You wouldn't have thought they'd have bred fighters in such a resort like that. And now he's a beans and maize farmer. And we found an extra fight for him. It was generally thought he had 59 fighters. That had 60 and won 50 of them. 43 of those were stopped at some record the next time. Lost seven and drawn three. So you now he's only just pumping away there, Villasano. He's not throwing hard punches, almost like a dog burrowing for a bone there. Another low shot, Edge. Yeah, he's done it again, Villasano. In every world championship he's had, a point deducted for low punching. So that, that's really given uh, Hodgkinson a big advantage because he's got a two point round. Well, points aren't really what Hodkinson needs now. It's just a tighter defence right at this moment. He's well in front. I don't think there's any way the points can be turned around. But he just must keep nice and tight. If Villasana comes firing back, he's going to have to catch these punches. Oh, he's caught Hodgkinson there. You saw the delay. His face Two. winced as he got hit with those shots, as if to say, I'm going to go down here. Six. And he's asking all right, but... Uh, Referee, a good referee like that. He stopped it in this round. And I can't believe this. Villasana can't. He's fallen on the floor there. He doesn't believe it's happened to him. Fifth time up in the eighth round. And he had his back to us there, Jim, uh, at the commentary position. Hodgkinson. Well, Hodgkinson got caught with a good shot. It seemed to be on the eye. And he just all of a sudden lost heart. He just couldn't see, Jim. I think that was a the problem there. He was saying to the referee, I think, 
that I can't see anymore. He caught him with a half a dozen, not particularly hard-looking punches, and you saw that he was going to go down. There was a kind of hesitancy, wasn't there, before well, he went down? Well, I don't know if Hodgkinson is just heartbroken. He, he gave his best performance of his life. He hit that little fella with everything, everything, nothing more to do. You'll see, this is the first time Hodgkinson has been under pressure in the whole battle. Villasana has suddenly found a new lease of life, started firing the shots. Now, these were all good shots, Reg. Suddenly, Hodkinson under pressure, defence all over the place. Now, that was a good shot, another good shot. Now, that shot looked on the chin, on his feet, in, the, in a, a, a state to continue, but suddenly, I think his heart was just broken, Reg. I don't know if he's worried about the injury to the eye or if his heart just finally got broken because he had nothing left. He'd done everything to this man he could think of doing. So what else could he do? Now, these are good shots, Reg, coming in from Villasana. As I say, a new oh. lease of life, good shots. Yeah, he sort of... Uh, when he got up there, uh, Hodgkin, and there, it was obvious he was going down for that. He, he got up and he sort of shrugged as he went to the corner and at the referee. And I suspect he'll say, well, I'd had enough then and I just couldn't see. And a nice sporting touch there and a good, as usual with boxers, the big cuddle at the end. It's bad luck indeed for such a bold little guy as... Uh, as Villasana, and the, 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 the points at that stage were amazing, really. It was 69-63 on one card, 69-67, and 70-64, all in Hodgkinson's favour. Winning by a mile there. That's the official scoring I've got, uh, got there. And it, the ring really is, uh, well, it's like a carnival in a car park, you can imagine that, everybody's in there. It's such a disappointment for the Liverpool fans who were actually on their feet only seconds before this was over. So if Gary Newborn can find his way through there, I'm sure he'll find somebody to talk to. He'd have to talk to himself. Now here he is with Hodgkinson. Paul, I've never seen a sight like that by a boxer who was winning a fight very, very comfortably in terms of points. I thought I was winning every round, but... As you the... won every one except one on the judges' cards. Yeah, but as, as, as the rounds were going on, you know, my eyes were closing over. And it was, there was no point in me carrying on, because I just couldn't see. You know, my eyes were closing over, and he was getting caught with shots. I wanted to carry on, but, you know... I mean, just to show how bad it is, what can you see at the moment? You can't see anything out I your left eye. I the right eye just to touch light, you know. But uh, I couldn't see the shots coming. So I'm just, not just doing it with short sight the sound. No, no, nothing to do with short sight. Uh, it's good that you can still laugh at the end of that, by the way. I'm disappointed, you know, and well, disappointed for all the fans. <laughs> it, you know, it, I could have I, I, I went out, I could have outboxed him if the eyes were okay. I would have won the rounds. I would have won the fight, no problem. But, you know, my eyes were closing over and I was getting caught with shots and he, and he, <clears> fellas <throat> Anna knew it and he come on strong. And, well, you know, before any serious damage could have been done, I, I decided, you know, to, I was more worried about the health more than anything, you know. Was it a punch or heads that I don't, I don't know, I'm not too sure, you know. I, was, I think it was the second round that happens. You must have knocked out many, many people if it had been anyone else but Villasar. I've never seen a boxer take so many knockout punches and come back. <clears throat> you know, I knew that myself before I'd gone the ring that it would have been hard to knock, knock this fellow out because he's been in, in with some of the toughest featherweights in the world. But uh, I knew my shots were hurting him, you know, I could tell him they were hurting him. He was, he was uh, hurt a few times, like, and uh, I think if my eyes would have been OK, I think he's, he, he'd have been the one who packed up. OK, Paul, terrific effort in a terrific state. Let's move on to your manager, Barney Eastwood. <laughs> Barney, you won't, you won't find that one difficult to talk about, but you must be very, very disappointed uh, as well. I was very disappointed. I thought he won every round. He won every one except uh, one on the judges' well, card. I thought he won every round. And, you know, I think, uh, firstly, the cut was caused by a clash of heads, and the, the bruise was by a butt. I'm quite sure of that. It was unintentional, probably. And then, to finish it, what he could see in that last round, he got hit a low blow, and it, it probably affected him a little, and Villasana just got on top then with a few punches, and obviously he could see nothing. The eyes got very bad then. But well, he certainly had him well prepared for it. Yeah, if he, if he just had been able to stand on his feet for four rounds, he was the, he was the champion of the world. Well, what happens now? Well, he's still European champion. And he's going to take a rest, and then he'll defend his European title again, and we'll see what goes on from there. Bad luck, Paul. Real sickness of that. Nah, Great performance. Yeah. Plenty of time. I'll be back. We're proud of you. Well, that was a terrifically courageous out, terrifically courageous performance there from Paul Hodkinson. We've got more boxing to come. Let's take a short break while we recover from that.
Welcome back. Well, I can't remember a boxer as unlucky as Paul Hodkinson. He was winning all but one of those rounds, and he finished up. Couldn't see a thing, really, at the end there, Jim Watt. He, he really did have to pack it in, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, he was under a handicap from the early rounds. He could cope with a handicap when he was going forward in control of the action, but in the last round and a half, Villasana started to push him back a little, come back into the fight. So when the punches were coming towards him, he couldn't see them. Also, I think he was a little bit broken-hearted. He'd done so well in the, the, the whole fight, controlled the whole fight, and the man was still standing looking back at him. It must be heartbreaking. I feel so sorry for him. Well, it's always easy to look objectively when you're not involved, but... Looking back, when Hodkinson looks at that again, is there something in the fight he could have done differently? Well, not really. I mean, he was so far ahead in points, he could maybe have coasted a little bit, you know, save damage on the eye. But it's always easy to be wise after the event. I thought he did everything right. It was a horrible injury, a bad cut, bad swelling, and he coped with it so well. I feel so sorry, as I say. Nothing else he could have done. It was the performance of his life. Well, we're so busy talking about the lad who looked as if he was going to win it. What about Villasana? Is he really a good world champion? He's certainly the bravest world champion I've ever seen. I think tonight it's not the better man who won, it's the bravest man who won. And, well, I think he deserves it. When you look through his previous uh, record, his previous attempts at winning a world title, nobody deserves a title more. It's just a pity it was at the expense of Paul Hodkinson. At this stage of his career, do you think Villasana will hang on to it or do you think another Briton should try and get it off him? It's difficult to say. He takes so many punches. I don't like to see fighters taking as many punches as Villasana takes, but he's been doing that all his career. He seems to thrive on it, so good luck to the man. What happens to Paul Hodkinson now, do you think? Well, that was a world-class performance. He, he was well in front. He, he proved he's the better technician, the better fighter. He just has to come back and get another crack, either at Villasana or one of the other champions. He is a big name in the game now, Paul Hodkinson. Right, well, let's move on to the WBC international champion. Now, that's for boxers who were rated outside the top ten, because you now, John Davison, from Newcastle, could get a chance of a world title fight. It's not going to be Paul Hodkinson. It could be Marcus Villasana. First of all, do you want to go in and fight a champion who doesn't seem to be able to be knocked out? Well, I mean, uh, the thing about punches, Paul is a great puncher, but he punches so often and rapidly, that's how he takes his opponents out. Well, we may I can take a opponent out with one punch uh, on the day when, when it naturally comes to I think it would be a great fight. The good thing about Villazona, he stands two to two of fighting, and that's my kind of fighting. Uh, you know, the boxing, uh, that's not my game. Paul's got a great eye for the target. Paul could probably outbox me all day, but uh, fighting-wise, for strength and power, I think I've got the upper hand there. How do you beat Villasana, then? Well, you'd have to stop him. But nobody seems to be able to stop him. Yeah, well, no, no, he's never been counted out, and he's fought Fennec and Nelson twice. Uh, yeah, well, well, when I, I watched Villasana fighting Fennec, and the way Fennec beat him, he stayed on top and he stayed that close to him. So he didn't give him any leverage on the punches for his power, because, I mean, he has got natural power. So if I fought Villazana, I would have to stay right on top of him and try to outwork him and maybe try and get a few nice hard shots in. Let me just ask you what the state is. I mean, you, you're here tonight to try and get a world title fight with the winner. We now know it's Villasana. What is your manager, Tommy Conroy, going to do now? Well, he's just going to try and work on uh, Villazana, try and get Villazana to come back over here. Uh, if not, they may be trying for Paez, but I've just got to wait and see what happens now. Jorge Pires and, and Antonio Sparagoza are the three different world champions. Uh, you fancy Villasana then? Yeah, without a doubt, yeah, after watching tonight. Yeah. OK, well, Jim Watt has seen a lot of John Davison on the Fight Night series. Is he capable of beating Villasana? I know he's standing next to you. It's always a bit yeah, awkward, don't you? Well, what I will say, uh, I've seen a sample of John's power, and I don't think there's any way Villasana could offer his chin to John Davidson the amount of times he offered it to Paul Hodkinson tonight. But uh, the man is just so tough. In my opinion, Hodkinson hit him with at least three dozen knockout punches, and none of those punches knocked a man out. It just seems to be superhuman. I've never in my life seen a man with a chin as strong as Villasana's. I'm really impressed. I wonder who'll be fighting him next. I don't really know. I mean, hopefully it'll be a big money fight because if anybody deserves big money, it's uh, Marcus Villasana. Tremendous fight, a tremendous professional. All the professionals in the game today must really admire that man, a great professional. Well, there you go. The verdict from Jim Watt. It's been a disappointing night for Paul Hodkinson. He looked as if he was on his way then to the WBC featherweight championship of the world. In the end, he couldn't see anything out of those eyes. It was the right decision to stop. Disappointing for him, but what a cracking fight it was and what a brave challenge. Good night.